right now. The White House uh, defending President Trump's attacks on NFL players who kneel in protest during the national anthem, saying the president is concerned about honoring the flag. Let's dig deeper with the former head of the NAACP, our CNN contributor, Cornell William Brooks. Uh, Cornell, this uh, morning the president tweeted mm. this, uh, and I'll put it up on the screen. The issue of kneeling has nothing to do with race. It is about respect for our country, flag, and national anthem. NFL must respect this. What's your, rea re your response to that, Cornell? The pre unfortunately, it pains me to say this, that the president's tweets and comments had nothing to do with the flag and everything to do with race. When the president refers to Colin Kaepernick in Alabama as a son of the B word, it is racial code for the N word across America and in Alabama. Particularly when he does so in the, can in the context of a campaign rally for the Republican nominee for the Senate, uh, particularly when he manages to demonstrate more uh, moral outrage against the NFL as opposed to Nazis. This has everything to do with race, particularly when Colin Kaepernick uh, played ball in a league that's 70 percent African-American, and particularly when he was protesting against the fact that African Americans are three times more likely to lose their lives at the hands of the police than their white counterparts. And where we have 963 people lost their lives at the hands of the police last year. The fact of the matter is these athletes, these owners, citizens across the country are standing in the legacy and lineage, say, the legacy and lineage of the American tradition of protest. And so they honor, be clear about this, they honor the values of the flag and the Constitution when they protest police misconduct. And so for the president to go down to Alabama and engage in race baiting is frankly disgraceful. Well, why do you say it's code for using the N-word? Well, when you refer to an African-American player in Alabama uh, as the son of the B-word, you defame and uh, disgrace his parentage uh, and those uh, like him. Many of us across the country take exception to that. And I would suggest that if someone referred, spoke to the president's son, his youngest son, as a SOB, I'm sure the first lady would take exception to that. And he should take exception to that. And so I've spoken to a great many African-American women and women who find this both misogynistic and racist. And again, it is both race baiting and gender baiting for political purposes. Now, the president could have spoken about uh, police misconduct. He could have spoken about the, the constitutionally wrong-headed, morally wrong-hearted policy of the Department of Justice with respect to consent decrees. He could have spoken about a number of issues substantively. Well, he took this as an occasion to again uh, engage in race baiting. He didn't take on the issue. He didn't address what Colin Kaepernick and so many others, uh, so many Americans across this country are protesting against. Again, he engaged in name calling and he did it for political purposes. So are, are you saying the president is a racist? I am saying that the president is engaging in racist behavior. When you refer to Nazis and white supremacists as fine people. Uh, when you retweet things from white supremacist uh, websites, when you appoint Steve Bannon uh, as a presidential advisor, when you engage uh, in this wrong-headed philosophy of birtherism, the president has engaged in serial, serially racist behavior. Now, uh, calling him a racist, um, he's certainly making the case to be called a racist by the things he has done. He's making that case. What would you like to see or hear from the president uh, right now? What I'd like to hear from the president right now is I'd like to hear the president focus on the issues, address the issue of police misconduct in this country, call for the passage of the In Racial Profiling Act. Why 
can't the president challenge uh, those who gave so generously to his campaign to give to a fund to support the victims, the families of uh, the victims of police misconduct? Why can't the president stand with, call these players to the White House and engage in a conversation, a serious and substantive conversation about what do we do about uh, the loss of life represented in the tragedy of Alton Sterling or Philando Castile or Tamir Rice or Sandra Bland or Michael Brown? He could do that. He could stand up and step forward and, and, and conduct himself as a president. Instead of engaging in uh, divisiveness uh, by attacking the NFL, what president, Wolf, ask yourself this, what president refers to a player as an SOB? That's just not appropriate. It's bigoted. It's ugly. I, but here's what I'm encouraged by. I'm encouraged by the fact that you have players you have Steph Curry, you have LeBron James, you certainly have Colin Kaepernick. You have players and owners and fans who are standing together, who are demonstrating that we are stronger together than we are fighting against one another and being divided, and who are demonstrating the eloquence of our hopes as a people. And the fact is, you can both pro protest against what's wrong with America, even as you love America, and even as you as you support the values of the flag. Because it's one thing to wave the flag, it's another thing to fight, to protest, to vote for the values of the flag. And that's what those athletes are doing. And the president should model their behavior. Cornell William Brooks is uh, the uh, former president of the NAACP, is a CNN contributor. Cornell, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank We're you. We're going to have much more.